So, <clears throat> it was somewhat recently, in the last week, I had popped into someone's stream to watch, and at one point he had popped into someone else's stream and joined the voice chat that that other guy was in. But they were both friends, so, you know, him going into his stream and vice versa otherwise kind of made sense. But the guy's stream who he had popped into had super chats going, and there were people, oh, sending Bible verses in uh, the super chats, and TTS was on, so you had TTS reading off these Bible verses from people's super chats. And so this guy that had popped in is like, are there Bible verses in your stream based? And so I was thinking about that earlier as I was mowing again and finishing that up. And it kind of, what makes the Bible so based that way? What is it about it? What kind of, what truth specifically is it rooted in that you could say that? So I got to thinking, so one thing that you see laid out, it's very applicable, still kind in many people's minds, is in the Law of Moses, God lays out quarantine measures and cleanliness measures for leprosy and other diseases. So, you basically got the priest, in essence, acting in place of a doctor or a physician's assistant and checking on people. And then, eventually, when they show up clean from, like, leprosy or some other disease that they may have, then they are pronounced clean and they can come back into the city. They get cleansed at the temple. And then they can rejoin society. But while they are diseased, they basically have to stay quarantined from everyone else. So you see the sick being quarantined. You also have, like, various cleaning measures laid out. I can't remember exactly specifically. Um, President Russell M. Nelson talks about it. He went to a medical university in China and talked about this. Um, for those that don't know, he was he's was a well-renowned oh, heart surgeon before becoming an apostle in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and eventually the, the president or prophet. And he's also well-respected among the people in China because of the work that he's done and the things that he's done to push heart surgery forward and the innovations there. <clears throat> but he talked about how the Bible lays out an excellent medical approach strategy for cleanliness and other things, quarantine and um, healing. And that was at a non-religious university. Um, so you've got that, like, kind of some of the first recorded medical measures. And then another thing is, when you look at the Ten Commandments, those Ten Commandments are basically basic ground rules to obey in order to have a good relationship. You don't murder someone if you want to have a good relationship with other people. You don't steal from them if you want to have a good relationship with them. You don't lie about them. A lot of these are being violated now, and people wonder why they're not liked very much. But in addition, well, let's see. Do, do. Yeah, um, you stay faithful in your marriage. So it's like no adultery. It's If you look through that, and you just obey those ten things, you can have a pretty successful relationship with other people. But then you've also got in the New Testament where Jesus lays out the new law and talks about love thy neighbor 
and um, treat those others how you would like to be treated yourself. And those are truths that help you to have a good relationship much more so because not only does it lay out like things that you shouldn't do, but it really lays out the groundwork of things you should do. And if you're doing the things that you should do, you won't be doing those things that you shouldn't do. Because you wouldn't want someone else to kill you or murder you. So you don't do it to other people. You wouldn't want people to lie about you so you don't do it to other people. But of course, people have forgotten that. But you also look at the counsel that Proverbs gives. And Proverbs has a lot of things in it. Like, you can just take one or two verses out of, like, the whole book of Proverbs... And you've got a whole bit of counsel that you can apply that would greatly increase your life. But what? I can't remember how many chapters there are of just like short one-liners that give you great counsel. And by just applying those principles and applying those truths, you end up becoming a better person. You've also got the laid out measure where Jesus says the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. So people that love money above all else end up chasing after that money above all else. And so they will sacrifice their happiness, their relationships, their marriage, their friendships, and everything else in order to have more money. And that's kind of a problem that you see is there are people that... They are rich in money, but they're not rich in everything else. So they're not truly wealthy. Whereas you get these people that can apply these truths and eventually gain those riches. And they live a much more happy life than these people that have violated these laws. So, again, the love of money drives can drive people to violate those laws. And so they end up in a position where they don't want to be an unhappy. So, so those are a couple of reasons why in a wider swath of people that would be considered the thing. Um, for a more personal measure on my standpoint, you look at the Book of Mormon, and it encourages you to study the Bible. In Isaiah, there are multiple references to study the words of Isaiah. There are quotes from Isaiah. There are encouragements. There are mentions of even the revelation of John in the Book of Revel to his Revelation recorded in the book of Revelation. And even a direct um, you could call it request or command to study the Bible to come to understand it and then as you study the Bible you'll come to understand that if you believe the Bible you'll believe this and if you believe this you'll believe that the Bible. So I don't know, I think a lot of people get confused by the standpoint that, oh, well, Latter-day Saints or Mormons don't believe in the Bible. It's like, wait, how can, you, how can you say that when the book of Scripture that, you know, we have encourages us to study the Bible, it's like, you don't believe it. It's like, wait, 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 what? I think, who was it? I think it was a Baptist preacher. He was talking about the Book of Mormon. He had read it through and through. And he said that the Book of Mormon is a more Baptist book than any Baptist preacher in the Bible. Because it talks more about Jesus in many cases than the Bible does. Because from like chapter 1 you see mentions like the, or from the yeah, from like the first chapter that you read, you see mention of Jesus.
But I mean, it's not like the Bible doesn't have that. If you really look at it, it does mention Jesus all over, if you understand it. But he was talking about it that, like, the Book of Mormon is more Baptist than, like, any other Baptist church because of how much it talks about Jesus and how much he's brought up. And I, I mean, that's kind of amazing to hear from someone that isn't of my own faith that he would say that. He's hasn't been baptized, but he still believes that and says that, and it's amazing to me. And I find it kind of funny. But when you look at the Bible, you can study so much truth out of it, get so much truth out of it, that yeah, it's pretty based. It's based in the natural law and human understanding that if you apply those principles in there, you're going to have a better life. And I think that's what people have forgotten is they discount the Bible is just a religious book. And it's like, you know, there are many atheists out there that would say that there's still a lot you can learn from it and apply from it and you would have a better life. So that's why it's so based. Anyway... Yep, got a Discord, so if you want to, like, yell at me and say that I'm wrong, that's okay. You can join that and yell at me. <laughs>